Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Let's Build the Sci-Fi Sky Train Station slash Shopping Center. And in episode one and two, or episode one, we gray blocked the whole building out. Episode two, we finished the gray block and got our pathing to work. And in episode three, we're pretty much just going to decorate. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, so. If you guys haven't seen the other two episodes please do go check them out and uh, this thing is turning into quite the monstrosity it's uh, as you see here I'm doing the decorating but we're doing it on a separate building I took a little block and combined the pieces to it and started doing all the decorating because the base building without any decorations was something like 1700 pieces so there's no way I think a blueprint has a max limit of 2,000 pieces and there was no way we were going to be able to fit all of our pieces in our, our decorating in just 300 pieces so um, I was thinking ahead and I thought well worst case scenario all the decorations will be a separate blueprint which is really unfortunate because when I upload this thing the screenshot you get one chance to do a screenshot and it takes whatever you can see on the blueprint. So it's gonna be this really bare building in the screenshot, and then there's gonna be another one, a separate blueprint that is essentially just um, a bunch of floating decorations. But I'm gonna figure it out, and I got a good, I got a good idea down for how these are gonna get combined together. I'm gonna to put this little tool down where you can align these things. And you can just align them and boom your decorations will be perfect and then you can just delete the little aligner tool after so I got a good plan for it and in the screenshots when I upload it I'll say you know building base plus decorations equals this and you'll see it you know all the screenshots will be the final result but if you want to download this blueprint you're essentially going to have to download two blueprints put them together and then you're likely gonna have to watch a you know five to ten minute video tutorial on how to make all the pathing work properly so I don't know if it's gonna be a popular Steam Workshop item guys it's a bit unfortunate that Planet Coaster has limited us to 2,000 pieces I mean I couldn't even imagine building coaster blueprints with only 2,000 pieces it's a bit unfortunate I was looking online I saw this one guy built a Star Wars coaster that I might feature next week that is an eight blueprint upload each blueprint is 2,000 pieces for a total of 16,000 pieces and you have to upload I mean you have to figure out how to puzzle together eight different blueprints to make his coaster complete it's quite wild so um, people are being resourceful but I like to try and keep all my buildings within the 2,000 piece limit however we're building this SkyTrain station for Yeti land so it comes with Yeti land so when you download the Yeti land map you're going to be able to start building on Yeti land with all these cool SkyTrain stations and you won't have to worry about setting it up or doing any of the blueprints because I'll have that all done for you so that's really the intention here and uploading it as a blueprint is a bonus but it's gonna be a little bit of work anyways so I'm not following what I'm talking about I'm just trying to catch everybody up in the background you see me making fountains and that's you know you're starting to see the original plan from the very first episode starting to come together where I had this idea of a multi-tiered waterfall system and now I get to start decorating it and making it actually work so it looks pretty cool with the special effects dropping from the top tier all the way down and then um, the reason the last one is kind of coming through the ground we're gonna add some sort of a ventilation thing where the water is actually pouring through these vents so um, the, I guess the second to last tier is actually uh, dispersing the water through the pool rather than pouring it over the edge and there was a little bit of a problem because we put that underground walkway and the special effects are actually pouring through the ground and soaking all the people walking through the walkway but um, what can you do I mean it is what it is and it actually looks like a kind of a cool effect so if you take the underground walkway you're gonna get wet <laughs> but they have plenty of other ways that they can use to go up and the AI doesn't seem to really care so that's fine 
And I thought this was kind of a cool little effect, adding one of those ring splashers to the second level to give it a little bit more umph. And I, I wanted to play around with some more ideas, so I was looking at the different spouts and stuff. And I like this little water spritzer, so I thought, well, maybe I have one of these water spritzers on each side, uh, you know, shooting towards the center, and make it a little bit more pretty looking. And I like the look of that, so I wanted to take that and add it to the other tiers as well. So, having a lot of fun with the decoration part. In episode 2, there was a lot of, like, just trying to get things right and finish the last base of the structure. And that's usually, like, to me, um, my least favorite part is just, like, doing the QA and making sure everything's proper. Whereas this is definitely my favorite part. We got the building blocked out. We don't have to worry about anything but just experimenting playing and using the decorations in all sorts of fun you know resourceful ways and seeing how creative we can get now sometimes you'll run into a problem like this where you're like okay i have to go back to basically step one which is doing stuff on the building but um that's that's not too bad once in a while if you're adding decorations and you'll have to switch back and forth the one difficult thing here is I have to switch between buildings now which is a little bit of a pain in the butt and I got to make sure I'm on the right building when putting these things down um, don't want to actually accidentally be on building one while we're decorating so um, as I was saying in episode one we built these gaps between the walls because we wanted to eventually fill them in with uh, plants so we were kind of planning ahead so as I've used in Planet Gulpy and the uh, Royal, Royal Coaster or King Coaster's Royal Bank I use those um, hedge plants because the hedge plants to me are the best plants for sci-fi they're very clean and they have that kind of utopian feel to them and uh, they just work work really well and you can use the basic shapes to create like planets and stuff and I've been running with that theme for those other two buildings that I made so I figured why not use that again here to add cohesion between my workshop uploads so if you have the bank you have the planet gulpy and you have the skytrain station now you can have them all kind of near each other and they're all gonna look very fitting they're using the same vinyl plastic, the same style, the same um, shrubs and scenery, or I should say floral, and then, you know, the lighting system's all the same. So they, they should all blend in seamlessly, and you should, if you download my sci-fi universe, you're going to be able to make a really cool, you know, futuristic sci-fi park. So that's my whole plan here with the sci-fi universe, is to eventually build all the shops, all the train stations, different sizes for all of them. So you have variety and, you know, choice between what you need and where you need it. And um, and then eventually I wanted two sci-fi coasters and um, ride skins. I mean, I don't think, I mean, we're getting there. I, I don't think we're, it's too much of an endeavor or lofty goal because we've already got 35 sci-fi items in the universe and we now with the seven new shops we're gonna have to have um, 21 new shops because we want small medium and large and I'm probably gonna come up with some crazy ideas for humongous so uh, <laughs> they had to go in and add in more shops but that's just more fun I can't wait to make a donut shop and a few other ideas uh, ice cream parlor I really wanted to do that one so um, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually but the one thing that kind of makes me sad about the whole situation is sci-fi isn't as popular as fantasy like I uploaded that festive train station the gingerbread one and I immediately gained like 20 new followers and I don't usually get them that quickly so uh, I know I see some other people um, who are just focusing on fantasy who have like a third as many of the things that I have and they got like twice as many followers than me just because fantasy is more popular so, I don't know, I kind of went with, I guess, the least pop, one of the lesser popular things. However, my sci-fi has a different feel to it in terms of, um, it kind of can work for a modern theme park. It's not, like, overly sci-fi. I don't have, like, robots everywhere, and I'm not, 
you know, going crazy with the tech. It really just is like modern, semi-futuristic, clean. It just has a really clean feel to it. Sure, I'm using some of the sci-fi panels here and there, but generally it could fit in both a modern park and a sci-fi park. So maybe like things like my giant T-Rex and my research and development kind of stuff might not be uh, <laughs> too modern, but you know, it's a mixed bag is what I'm trying to say. There's a little bit of everything. Um, however, the fantasy does seem to be the most popular and I would love to start building some fantasy objects because I think I would do pretty good at it and I love fantasy and when I'm done this it's gonna be so refreshing to start on a new project so part of me wants to really hold off and not really dip my feet in the water yet because I don't want to lose my patience and my focus on what I started I have a I feel like I have to follow through with everything I do, finish what I started, and really, you know, give it my all. And that, to me, should give me the biggest payoff. So, uh, yeah, we're just, uh, I'm just trying to find things to talk about while we watch me do pretty basic stuff. We're, we just pretty much added vines. There wasn't really much to say there anyways. You guys saw it in the background while I ranted. Um, but now I'm looking to make some planters so I use one of those sci-fi jets and I saw this on someone else's workshop and I really love this idea and I incorporated it in one of my other buildings and now moving forward this is kind of like my my go-to for sci-fi planters is making these little guys here so I like this idea this part got a little bit tricky because I had to wedge it all in there and just kind of adjust them a little bit and I kind of derped out because I didn't I thought blue was fine for the color the light for that uh, jet later on decided that green would be better and I had to go and select the ball and change it but luckily we're at like six times speed so you guys don't have to suffer through watching me select them all and change the colors so it goes pretty quickly and here I'm just adjusting their heights randomly grab some randomly adjust their heights rotate them randomly and that way they don't look perfect you want to look down them and see some randomness and here I want to decorate the fountain and I actually made a big mistake here uh, I had building I had the other buildings selected so they're being added to the base building and, uh, and then I noticed it after and I went oh crap so a bit of a blunder there and that's like the problem when you're working on two different buildings is you can accidentally select the other building and now you're working on that one and it's really a pain in the butt especially when you're trying to adjust things because you keep selecting the other building and now your selection group is all messed up so this to me is probably going to be possibly one of my last i'd say double blueprint buildings i didn't actually think this would uh go above the 2000 so I was separating it there going oh crap it's in the wrong building yeah, it's not a part of the decorations. Um, so I undo it all and have to restart. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, this is going to be one of my last and maybe only two-part blueprint buildings. I didn't think it was going to go over the 2000 limit until, you know, I just kept on adding more. I was like, now I want five levels and now I want this and then... Next thing you know, it got carried away and I knew I was going to bust the limit as soon as I got the, the base of the building done. And I figured, well, we're just going to have to do a double burp blueprint. It is what it is. But it helps me understand the, the size restriction necessary to build a 2,000 piece blueprint. Because Planet Gulpy that you see off to the right there is, I believe... I can't remember off the top of my head. I believe it's like 1600 parts or something. It's one of my bigger ones. Uh, the train station was 1900 or 1850. The Sorry, the, the gingerbread chain, the festive train station. But it's covered in candy and icing. So that's going to increase your decoration count. Um, so Planet Gulpy there off to the right is kind of the size you want to aim for. You can go a little bit bigger. And this one when we're done it's probably gonna be 
close to 4,000 pieces, very close to 4,000. So anything, I'd say half the size of this and a little bit smaller, just so you have wiggle room. You always want wiggle room. You don't want to hit that 2,000 point limit and find that you have to actually stop decorating. So here I'm just adding a little bit of for variation, height, changing the height on the vines. And um, now I'm thinking about doing some decorating. So I took my Wally that I made there and I took the blue balloons off him. That's the fastest way to get balloons made by just taking them off the ones I made for Wally. And um, we could use that for our balloon shop out front. And then I wanted to make an information logo. I guess like the cube or whatever so just make like a little eye out of basic shapes on a blue cube that matches the colors of the shop and there we go put it on grab it make sure it's in the right building and uh, that's why I put that little piece off to the side so I could select all the new pieces and go add to building and it just it selects the building because there's a piece of the building off to the side just a little tip of the day I guess I want to take one of those little claws from the sci-fi section so it would be holding up these little uh, props and there we go and I'm fiddling with this and I kind of messed it up I had to undo it and reposition it um, the orientation got all out of whack here so yep yeah, um, just getting it fitting just right and then adjusting it and then we want to grab our balloons and I realized the cord was too long so I had to undo that take one away bring it back in and drop it down and these guys were crashing in together they're a little bit badly spaced so I just wanted to space them out a little bit more and there we go we have this nice little uh, props for our shops out front and now our underground pathway I felt like it was a little bit too bare so I figured we would go in add in some more geometry to the first building so I went back to building one and decided to build up a little, um, what do you call it, planter uh, ledge. And um, just block that in there so that we have a nice little ledge for us to put our new um, trees into. And then when people are going underground, it's a little bit more inviting, has more decorations, increases their happiness, and then... Um, speed things up we just duplicate big group selection bring all that over and then get the last bit tucked in and then I wanted to take it to the next level and add some trees in uh, some hearts and we don't have much room to work with it's very tight so I'm trying to use the smallest ones possible and switch them up a little bit put a little bit of variety in here a sec my throat's drying up Right, so yep, just getting the variety in and the spacing wasn't right, so I brought that over and then I thought bring in just a, a new piece for the center. That finished up the foliage for our underground. And I also wanted to put some trees in the back behind that little bridge. So I was trying to see what kind of trees I could fit in back here, but we had issues with it going through the roof. So the tree was far too big found a smaller one and just adjusted it until I had to sink that part into the ground a little bit which was fine and yeah no I thought that would just add a little bit more noise and separation between the building the building glass and the uh, I should say uh, what's, what's the, the plaza area so I ended up forgetting about the tree something distracted me I don't know what it was and I decided maybe trying to put some trees on top would also be a nice touch and uh, just trying to see what trees would work then I looked over at Planet Gulpy and you could see how I did the trees here on Planet Gulpy and this was probably one of my favorite designs in terms of outdoor decorations on my sci-fi because it's a really good way of making sci-fi plants you can have these little planets with uh, you know gas planets and moons and like a little Mars and a, a water planet and that sort of thing and it's all built into some uh, hedges so I figured I could put the, those up top and that might look good 
and, and I don't know if it's going to work until I try it, so it's always a matter of experimentation. But I also wanted it to sort of match Planet Gulpy, because if you had a Planet Gulpy nearby, like if they get off the SkyTrain station, they might want to go shopping at Planet Gulpy or whatever. So it's, it's nice to have a little bit of consistency throughout my workshop creations. So I did want to switch it up a bit. So we did do a green and blue because I think the lighting that we do for the final stage of this uh, SkyTrain station slash shopping mall is going to be, we're going to use some green lights for the front because there's a lot of forestry and foliage out front. And then, um, you know, we might have some trees around the outside as well. So having some green lights in the whole lobby area or whatever you call it, the plaza area out front would be nice and then the sky train itself we could probably go with white lights i'm not really sure but i also think blue lights would be good like we did with the festive train station make it really have this nice blue glow um so that's kind of why i went with those blue and green gas planet saucers because i think that's the colors we're going to be using for this is blue green and white and those that'll be the final touches when we really hit this thing home so on the second level of the shopping mall where we have all the other the main shopping area i wanted to add more of a hangout area so this is directly underneath the sky train and we by adding a path in it actually took away the sky train uh supports which is awesome so now we actually had room to go in there and add in some decorations and later on you'll see we that's where we also place our atms so people and ATMs and benches and people will be able to go in there, sit down after they get some food. And it's almost like a little food court, uh, which is pretty cool. Now we're basically going into our, like this is getting close to the final touches, I'd have to say. We're, we're really just adding in sci-fi. We're, we're hitting home that sci-fi um, feel by using all the, the main sci-fi decorations. So we're covering up our windows with sci-fi panels, you know, side uh, floor kickers or whatever those are. And they have a little bit of lights on them. We have wall lights, we have um, like ceiling bumpers or whatever they're called. And I don't know, these, these pieces are all kind of random, but I have all my own crazy names for them. And uh, yeah, we're just really, adding more decorations in to make this whole area a little bit more inviting and less plain because if we have this underground tunnel that's just long plain white walls with a bunch of stores it looks kind of silly in my opinion so once we add in a little bit of um, foliage and, and trees and you know sci-fi pieces then it really looks inviting when you kind of peer inside then we'll add, you know, in the in the final stages of building this, we will be adding in some really nice illuminating lights to make it more inviting. And there just so happens to be a waterfall there. <laughs> um, so just so you guys know, um, what we're seeing right now and what you see at the end of this episode is actually where I'm at currently. I'm like, this is this is it for footage. I don't have anything after this. So um based i mean at the time of recording this video of course so tomorrow night after i release these because it's uh tuesday now so tomorrow we do workshop wednesday i guess it would be today if i release this video and then depending on when i release it i guess and then hopefully i'll have some time or find some time to actually finish this guy off so i don't really know what it's going to turn out to be it's a little bit of a surprise I don't know what the final lighting looks like. I don't know if I'm actually done with the decorations. Uh, I don't know. How, I can't remember how much more I have left to do. So it's cool because at this, you guys get the kind of you get a chance to put a little, get a little input in before this thing is actually finished. So um, if you're watching this and you know it, it's actually Wednesday then that means part four isn't even started yet. And uh, you can actually provide me some suggestions that I could listen to. So if there's something that you think could be added for decor or any light suggestions or anything like that, 
now would be the time to throw it out there. Or you could just tell me, um, you just tell me how it's, how it's going. So I always like reading your guys' comments. So yeah, this underground area here, I liked it and it ended up being a perfect spot for the ATMs, which I was really happy with because the people weren't walking over here. You can see they're, they're, the AI is like navigating them towards the shops and then towards this central walkway area. And they're, they're not paying attention to anything over there, even though we have paths over there. So when we add the ATMs, it actually causes the AI to disperse amongst that whole food court area and it really gets them moving around there. And once we add benches and stuff, that'll also help them. So you can see I put those back trees in just a second ago. Uh, finally got back to that. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about these. I always move back and forth, forget about things. And you know, I, I catch it when I do a QA pass. So I'm separating the building, taking a look, making sure I didn't mess up again and add a bunch of decorations to the building instead of the decorations um, blueprint. I mean, this thing is out of control, guys. It really is. I don't even, I don't even know what to say. This is my most ambitious building yet. I can't believe it turned out to be a double blueprint just for a building. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. Uh, next time we'll do things a little bit more efficiently. If I were to plan something like this in the future, I'll do a SkyTrain station and then a separate shopping mall. Not a two, not a two for one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, I still feel like maybe we should make a small SkyTrain station. Maybe just like rip the whole shopping mall off of this and uh, just use the SkyTrain part just so I can have a less humongous train station. So anyways, this is where I slow the footage down, which means this is probably the end of the episode and you guys could just get a look at it. This is where we are right now today. I haven't done anything further than this. So this is the final result. However, we're not done. We got a lot more decorating to do. The top of the roof needs to be decorated. Um, I still have to add all the AC units. I have to add shop signs. I have to add all the backside here. I have a lot to do and it's, it's not even close to being finished. I have lights to do, special effects, all that jazz. So please be stay, uh, please stay tuned for part four and it will likely be our final part. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like, please be sure to smash that like button. If you're new, subscribe and let me know what you guys think of this down in the comments below. All right guys, I'll see you in part four. See ya.